As part of a full approval test program, the MC-21 is being tested for flutter while it is in real flight. The goal of these tests is to confirm that there are no unsafe structural oscillations in the operational flight mode. As part of the tests, the airframe's resistance to flutter movements is checked, as well as how the wings and control surfaces react to aerodynamic loads. The structural parts of an airplane, especially the wings, can flutter, which is a type of self-excited, non-damping, bending, and torsioning aeroelastic vibration. When this key speed is reached, these oscillations happen, and they could destroy the plane. To put it more simply, flutter is a dangerous shaking that can happen to parts of an airplane, like the wings, when it goes too fast. The plane is shaking more and more, and it won't stop until something is done. If nothing is done, it could break. There were a lot of ground tests in TSAG's wind tunnel before the flight phase. A1 is to seven scale model of the MC-21 that was dynamically similar to the real thing, was tried at speeds up to 1,100 kilometers per hour, equivalent to full scale conditions. These studies helped figure out the key flutter speed and looked at how changes in the stiffness of a structure affect its stability. Modern measuring tools are used to keep track of tens of thousands of parameters in real time during flight tests on the full-size airplane. This is done to find any problems with the structure's dynamic behavior. Special attention is paid to high load situations and extreme angles of attack, which are very similar to operational settings in the real world. As part of flutter evaluation flights, the performance of the control system is tested against aerodynamic pressure. This helps check how much vibration gets to the control surfaces and find potentially dangerous things like resonant waves in the control surfaces and wing panels, which could cause a lot of flutter and damage the structure. The flutter test ends with proof that the plane's structure stays strong in all operational modes that are allowed and within the safety margins that have been set. The structural reliability is backed up by studies done on the ground or in a lab and real-life flight tests. Mstislav Keldish made a major addition to our understanding of flutter by creating a mathematical theory that makes it possible to accurately find the critical speed at which wings oscillate on their own. Keldish's work, which made Soviet aviation much more reliable, was used to come up with ways to stop this dangerous event. In 1942, the Stalin Prize was given to him for these things. His scientific work got rid of a big problem that was stopping the growth of high-speed aviation. During the Great Patriotic War, Flutter almost completely stopped destroying planes. Keldish also created numerical methods for modeling and estimating Flutter in wind tunnels. These methods set the stage for a new area of research in the science of aviation's structural strength. This work had a huge impact on the field of engineering. So how is it different from checking the Airbus A321 and Boeing 737 for flutter? One thing that makes Russian aircraft development stand out, especially in the MC-21 program, is that they do a lot of testing in big wind tunnels. The Central Aerohydrodynamic Institute, TAE, tested an MC-21 model that was 1 is to 7 scale and had the same dynamic properties. The top speed of these tests was 1,100 km per hour, which means they covered a wide range of flight conditions that go far beyond normal cruise conditions. This way of doing things comes from the way engineers worked in the Soviet era when they focused on physical verification and planning for the worst-case situation. Airbus and Boeing, on the other hand, both use wind tunnel testing, but they depend more and more on computational fluid dynamics, CFD simulations, and digital prototyping. The Russian way is still based on physical modeling, and real test results are more important than data that was only generated by simulations. The theory behind load testing is another big thing that sets them apart. The MC-21's flutter tests put the plane under more stress than usual for commercial use. These tests include a maximum angle of attack, 
higher dynamic loads, and stress envelopes that look like military tactical profiles. This comes from the past. Russian civilian planes are often made to be able to be used for both civilian and military purposes, as well as to operate in harsh weather or settings. Airbus and Boeing, on the other hand, only do certification envelope testing, which means making sure that speed and safety stay within the design limits set by EASA or FAA. Their mindset is more focused on managing risks and making things run as smoothly as possible, making sure the plane meets all the rules instead of exploring possible extremes. The way the Russians think about flutter is shaped by the work of Mstislav Keldish, who was one of the best scientists in the USSR. In the 1940s, Keldish came up with a mathematical theory that made it possible to precisely calculate the critical flutter speed. This was a big step forward that made Soviet airplanes much more stable during and after World War II. His ways of doing things are still deeply ingrained in the way institutions like Teji and airplane design bureaus do design and testing. Although Airbus and Boeing both have long histories of good engineering, flutter testing is treated as more of an academic discipline in Russia, where it is seen as an important part of following the rules. The MC-21 has very advanced onboard instrumentation systems that record tens of thousands of factors in real time while it is in flight tests. Changes in pressure, wing deflection, control surface behavior, vibration frequencies, and more are some of these. With this telemetry system, engineers can see small problems and repetitive actions as they happen. On the other hand, Airbus and Boeing typically focus on a smaller group of key factors that best meet certification requirements instead of conducting exploratory research. Western systems are just as technologically advanced as Russian ones, but Russian practice is based on a culture of deep study where every possible variable is studied to avoid even the most unlikely or close to impossible failures. Lastly, the disparity in flutter testing illustrates the general workings of engineering. Russian aircraft design, especially after the fall of the Soviet Union, is based on the idea that systems should be able to work even when they fail completely. Planes are made and tested to have multiple backups, be strong, and have many safety gaps so they can handle anything from harsh weather to being abused in the air. This way of thinking affects flutter testing, where the plane has to show that its structure is still strong even when it's at the edge of its capabilities or under too much stress. On the other hand, Western aircraft certification is more iterative and focused on following the rules. The goal is to stay within the certified flying envelope. Such an approach makes development go more quickly, but it can leave less room for surprises, which is an area where Russian ideas often go above and beyond. In conclusion, the MC-21's flutter testing is significantly more stringent compared to the Airbus A321 and Boeing 737 programs. It is based on a lot of historical knowledge, scientific theory, and a national engineering mindset that values full physical validation. Airbus and Boeing increasingly rely on digital modeling and compliance-focused testing. However, the MC-21 program showcased the Russian method, notable for its depth, conservatism, and emphasis on stress endurance. This difference shows not only different technology paths, but also various views on the reliability and safety of engineering. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, please take out channel membership, which is very affordable, to encourage us.